Hello again, everyone. This is Randy, your sewing machine man. And what we have today is a beautiful little Singer 403A. Customer brought it to me because it was locked up and she wanted to get it serviced. I'm pretty sure she said that this was the machine her mom taught her how to sew on. And uh, we started out with this thing in the locked up mode. And this is how it all began. Okay, so here's how it started out. This little guy it is a 403A. Uh, quite possibly one of the most awesome machines ever made. I would say the 401A, but that's the top of the line. This was the middle intermediate, which had the, you know, has the cams and the built-in zigzag. Everything has to be cam-driven, three-needle position, what have you. But uh, this one here came in locked up. Customer was concerned because it's locked up, and we get a lot of these locked up. So we're going to start out with locked up, and then we're going to... I'll take it apart, figure out what caused it to be locked up, and then we'll move to step two. Okay. Now, there's a lot of things that will cause it to be locked up, and the one you want it to be is the one this one was, and that's this. Okay. Step two on the little 403A is we took the uh, bobbin case out. Of course, it sits over here like so on the left-hand side. Of course, before you put the bobbin case in, you'll always want to put your position bracket in. I'm going to do this with one hand on the camera and one hand this and kind of do it. Yeah, do it exactly backwards because I'm disoriented. Here we go. That goes out at the angle. you got the little flat piece of steel under there, and that snaps down into place. Okay, that's how you get that in place. But here's what we got to do first. This little bobbin case, what was causing it? Call, it's called being thread locked. And every machine that's ever been made that's not a serger or a, or a chain stitch thread locks. When this stuff gets caught up between the bobbin case and the hook, it'll get caught in there and it will wedge in there just like it's absolutely welded. You will not get this to move. It was locked up like it was welded and because it just takes one piece. One piece, I think this is the one, this purple one, I think was the one that was in there. This this was stuck in between there. It was wedged inside. And what caused it to get wedged inside is this little aberration right here. See a little notch right there? That is not supposed to be there. That's called a thread abrasion. What? Yep, a thread will actually... Uh, uh, erode steel maybe called a thread erosion i like abrasion either way it cuts a groove in steel you know in industrial machines and factories uh thread will cut these in half cut these in half cut these in half you always have to look for little grooves and you can look on machines and see where the thread like even here has cut a groove that's cutting in the paint but down below it'll get into that too thread's pretty wild it will, especially polyester thread, it will cut a groove in steel, and that's what it's done here. It's cut a groove in that. And what I'll do is polish that out, and we'll go to step three. Okay. I'll put it on the polishing wheel, and go to step three. Get it all taken care of. And you hear the polisher grinder winding down the background there. I guess I could have waited, but I guess I'm in a hurry. Here we go. Uh, you see that right there? That little that little notch is no longer there because we polish it out. Now you can get your diamond file and file it. When I'm away from the shop, I use a diamond file, and then I use my uh, uh, crocus cloth and my emery paper, and I get that nice and pretty and smooth because if that little notch is there, whenever the thread comes around, it'll hang up. So you can take it apart, clear it, clean it, oil it, put that back in, but if you don't mitigate that big groove, what you'll have is the very first stitch. It will lock that baby down. You'll take one stitch and it'll lock it. And you'll get pretty frustrated because you'll think, what the heck? So you got to get that notch out of there. You have to have a thread gap there so the thread will slide through. That's your thread gap. And, of course, you want to make sure before you put it all back together, always with any of these machines, whether it has a metal bobbin or whether it has a plastic bobbin, you always oil around the circumference of a daggone hook and on this one we're going to oil down here get some oil underneath the hook and that needs to be oiled pretty regular i would do the outside around there probably about every two bobbins just a drop don't do it over on the left hand side so it'll get over on the tension keep it out of that area i would do it over let me switch hands i'm more adept over here I think yeah 
Lock this down in. And we do it over here on the right-hand side. Bring it around and put the drop away from the bobbin case. Put it over here. A couple of drops every two bobbins so you can keep that nice and lubricated up. Of course, when you start sewing, you want to make sure you sew the oil out of it. Uh, you'll Maybe if you're sewing with white thread, you'll see it come through. It'll look like grease or something, but it's actually metal shavings for where you didn't oil it before. So get all that out of the system and away to go. Let's go to the next step. Okay, and of course, when you're oiling that, make sure you oil everything else on the machine, but that's the most important place because it will lock up down there more than anything else because that's the, that's the high-speed rotation, metal on metal. That's where you'll get most of the lockups is in your bobbin case area. It's almost always a lockup there. It's very rarely when it's not. All right, all right. Next step, uh, found out the daggone tension assembly. Uh, this was just vibrating down to zero. There was no tension on this at all and this happens quite often if it gets bumped these little pieces in here get collapsed and of course you have to take this off and you have to very gently spread these back you know you torque this bottom and down the top and up very gently and i'm even reluctant to show you this because these things will break and how do you keep from breaking them you stop torquing them right before they break which is ludicrous but you get the joke you know you Stretch the bottom one down, top one up. You know, you push up. I got a tiny little screwdriver. You don't put a great big one on it, you'll snap it right off. It's it's like the middle wants to go back to its memory place. You just torque it, bounce it, torque it very slightly. It takes a while. It's probably a, I don't know, 10-minute proposition to get it, but you don't want to break it, so there's no hurry. You don't want to break it. So you put this back on to where... It will turn with some resistance instead of just, it can't just spin because when the machine vibrates, the tension will go from four to zero. It'll jam. And of course, uh, the lovely lady who had this machine brought it to me, she had been taking it to places and I don't know if they don't know or they were overlooking it or they're in a hurry or what, because I don't know. I can only guess. But uh, I know a lot of times now you go to these uh, sewing centers and the grandkids are in there. I competed uh, straight up against their grandpas and their parents, and now it's the grandkids. And then I know their grandpas and their dads were very proud machinists and did good work and they take the time to get it right. And nowadays, I'm not so sure that's the case. So a lot of times you'll take it in and get a service, and then a month later you're like, what the heck? It's doing the same thing again. Well, it could be as simple as this thing vibrating down because they didn't check it. So I'll put this all back together and get it uh, sewing real pretty. And, of course, I'll always make sure when I get done with it, the tension will be on four because I can calibrate it any way I want it to go. And uh, I always leave it on four because that's the factory setting, four. Three to five is the range. Of course, we'll go ahead and recondition the needle plate because it was banged up pretty good and get that nice and straightened out. Put it back together and go to the next step. All righty. Now, the next step is my favorite part that's what we show off okay we get the uh wonderful uh, machine to back together and calibrated so uh once we put this back on it it'll be set on four but we set on four uh which means it's balanced and uh by balanced i mean on a zigzag you got the zigzag now on the straight stitch look across it like the waves on the ocean and we'll put it on straight stitch Zip. and away we go put some spool pins on her and some uh, pads and uh, clean it up and uh, mechanically inside everything's all oiled and ready to go polish now we'll get it looking pretty okay what do we got now here it is looking pretty 
a beautiful little Singer 403A. Got the new spool pens, spool pads, and cleaned it up real nice. It's been taken real good care of. It's a real nice specimen on a scale of 1 to 10. This is probably between a 7 and an 8. It's got, you know, where it's been used. And that's the best thing for a machine is to be used. You'd rather to be used than not because that keeps everything running young. So, a nice little machine. You can get one of these. You know, if you can get one of these between, uh, I don't know, three and five hundred dollars the prices are going up 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 get one on a cabinet they fit standard singer cabinets this one was kept in the carrying case was kept nice and clean a nice little machine try to get yourself one singer 403a